Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna talk about securing your Unify network. We're gonna go over things like enabling 2FA, creating switch port profiles, and locking certain devices to your MAC address. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support this channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put the link in the description below. The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to enable two-factor authentication on your account. So we're gonna to wanna to go to account.ui.com and then we're gonna to wanna to log in with our username and password. Once we're logged in, we're gonna to wanna to press security. And then we wanna enable two-factor authentication. So you could use a couple different authentication apps. I use Google Authenticator, but you could also use Authy. We could also change the session timeout limit. Right now it's set to a month, but I'll set it to one day. And then we're gonna enable the 2FA. Here we're gonna have a two-factor authentication QR code that we need to scan with our Google Authenticator or our Authy app. Once we've scanned the QR code with our Authenticator app, we need to put in the six digit number and then press submit. Now we have 2FA turned on. The next big thing we need to do is generate new backup codes. The reason we want these backup codes, if we ever lose our phone or the device that has our Authenticator app on, we need to have the backup codes to restore this. So we need to insert our 2FA key again and then press generate backup codes. Here it's gonna give us 10 backup codes that you wanna keep in a secure place. Now that we have two-factor authentication enabled, we're gonna log in my UDM Pro, and then we're gonna disable remote access. To disable remote access, we're gonna to wanna to go to system settings, and then we're gonna to wanna to click on advanced. From here, we're gonna to wanna to disable remote access, and then press disable. One thing to note, if you're using your UDM to use Unify Protect, the Unify Protect app will stop working. You won't be able to remotely view it on your iOS phone or your Android phone. You'd still go in through a VPN and look at it through a web browser, but you won't be able to view it remotely from your phones. Now we have remote access disabled. The only way to remotely manage this network is through a remote user VPN. I've already created one. I'll put a link in the description on how to create a remote user VPN. So everything I'm gonna be doing is gonna be using the classic dashboard. I prefer using the classic mode. Some things are changed in the new UI that I don't like. Now let's go over switch port profiles. Whenever you create a new network, a switch port profile is created for that network. By default, all Unify switch ports are set to all, which means they're a trunk port and any VLAN could go down it. We don't want that, so we're gonna to wanna to create switch port profiles for our access points, our cameras, and any other device. I already have created an IoT network, but we need to tag the correct ports so that it goes into that network. If we click on port one, that's my U6LR, and we click the edit pencil, we could see the switch port profile is set to all. We only want to have this have the VLANs that is needed. So let's go over to my networks. So the networks that I have created is a LAN, a Mac Telecom camera, Mac Telecom guest, Mac Telecom IoT, and Queen. So we want to create a profile that has all of those and then assign it to our access points. So we're going to go down to profiles and then we'll go to switch port profiles. By default, it creates a new profile every time you create a new network. We're going to add a new port profile. And I'm gonna call this AP profile. Our native network is gonna be our LAN and then we're gonna tag all the VLANs that we wanna be a part of it. So the Mac Telecom IoT, Mac Telecom Guest, Mac Telecom Camera, and Queen. This doesn't have a voice network on it and I'll press save. Now what we wanna do, we wanna go back to our devices and then I'm gonna click on my U6 Enterprise switch and we'll start with this one. We can see here on port one, my U6LR is connected. On port three, my U6 Lite. And then on port nine, my in-wall HD is connected to that. So I'm gonna click all of them. So U6LR, U6 Lite, and then in-wall HD. And then I'll scroll down to the bottom. And then we're gonna press edit selected. Here, instead of having it at the switch port profile of all, we're gonna switch it to the new AP profile and then press apply. I'm gonna go back to that profile and rename it because we're gonna use that as a switch uplink profile as well. Instead of having my uplink set to all, we're gonna put it in the same profile so those networks could span between my switches. So I'm gonna go back to profiles and then we'll go to switch port profiles and then we're gonna edit the AP profile. Here I'm gonna call it AP and switch uplink profile and then we'll press save. 
Now I'll go back to my devices and then I'm gonna change all the uplinks to my switches besides my camera switch to that new profile. So I'm gonna start on my US 16 Lite. We're gonna find it on port 16, that's uplinking. Now we're gonna hit the edit pencil and then go to switch port profile. We're gonna select the AP and switch uplink profile and press apply. Next, we're gonna do the uplink to my USW enterprise switch. We could find the uplink is on port 26 and we'll hit the edit pencil and then switch the port profile to be AP and switch uplink and press apply. Now I'm gonna do my uplink from my aggregation switch to my UDM Pro and it's on port one. So we'll edit the profile and then we'll select the AP and switch uplink profile and press apply. And we could also do the same from my UDM Pro downlink to the aggregation switch. So we'll click on the downlink and then we'll put it into the profile of AP and switch uplink profile and press apply. Now that the uplink profiles are set to the AP and uplink profile, we wanna make sure that all our wired clients are connected to the proper VLAN. So I'll go over to my clients and then we'll select wired. Here you can see that this desktop is set on my LAN because it's a management device. And then we have my cameras that are already set in my Mac Telecom network VLAN. This Lutron device is a smart light switch and it should be in my IOT network. So we're gonna click on the UDM port one and then we're gonna select the edit pencil. Here the switch port profile, we're gonna select to Mac Telecom IOT and then press apply. My Synology NAS is a management device. So I have it in my LAN. My UNVR is in the camera network. My Raspberry Pi is acting as my DNS, so that's in the LAN. And then we have two other cameras and then a couple other management devices. The main thing to remember is to put all your wired devices in the proper VLAN. For wireless clients, we need to make sure that we have those in the proper VLAN as well. So select the SSID that you need them to be in. For instance, if that Lutron Lite Hub had a wireless card in it, I would wanna put it on my Mac Telecom IoT wireless network. Another good security practice is to disable any port that isn't being used. So we can see here that I have quite a few ports that aren't used. So I'll go over to my ports and I'll select all of them that don't have any lights on. Then we're gonna hit the edit selected and then we're gonna disable the ports and press apply. If we wanna lock down the ports even more, we could do that with the Mac allow list. So we'll click on my enterprise switch and we know that my U6LR is on port one. So we could click on port one and then hit the edit pencil. Here we have a Mac filter allow list. We could enter the Mac address of my U6LR, press add and then apply. Now, if we connect any other device with a different Mac address, this port won't work. I do this on all my access points and my cameras. That way somebody can't pull my camera down and plug in their own switch. I doubt it would happen, but it's just good security. Another thing we could do to secure our wireless network a little more is to have an allow Mac address list. So on my Mac telecom network, I only want a few devices that I use to manage my network. So if we click the edit pencil, I have support for WPA turned on. I have some access points that support WPA3, but if we scroll down to the bottom, we could see that we have an allow filter list. So I have mine set to allow and then I add the devices that I want to be able to join that network. If they have a different MAC address than what's specified here, they won't be able to join. We could also set up radius authentication, but I'm gonna cover that in a different video as it's quite heavy. Another good practice is to put in some firewall rules. So my main LAN could have access to everything, but I don't want any other VLAN talking to it or any other network. It only could have internet access and its own subnet access. So I put in some firewall rules to allow that. I have a full firewall configuration video and I'll put that in the description below as well. The last thing we're gonna to touch on is Unify Threat Management. So if you have a USG and you turn this on, it's gonna throttle your ISP connection to 85 megabits per second. If you have the USG Pro, it's gonna put it to 250 megabits per second. If you have the Unify Dream Machine base model, it will throttle you back to 850 megabits per second. And if you have the UDM Pro, you'll be getting 3.5 gigabits per second. So I'm gonna show threat management in the new UI as I think it looks better. This is one thing they did well. If we go over to internet threat management, 
we have two selections. This side is your IDS, which is the detection system. It will just detect an alert. And this side is your IPS, which will block the connections. I have mine set to level three, but you can see there's a lot of customization you could do with it. We have 35 different toggle switches on the UDM Pro. Under network scanners, we have a threat scanner. So this will scan every device on your network and let you know what's on there, as well as tell you which ports are open on those devices. This is good to know because if you have a printer, say with port 22 opened, you would want to figure out why and turn that port off. And then we have internal honeypots and you could create this for every network that you've created. The honeypot detects malware, worms, and other malicious activity, as well as somebody scanning your network. And we can see that we have different honeypot IPs. If we go over to the left and click on the shield, we're gonna see our endpoint scans. Here it's gonna be scanning all the devices on your network and it will show you the open ports. If you click on the device, it's gonna show you which ports are open. So for this device, we have port 8080 and 5555. And then we have our honeypot. Right now there is no threat detected, so we don't see anything. If we click on overview, this is gonna show us our geo filter IP. So we could block any country in the world. If we wanna block Russia, we could click Russia, China, or if we wanna block Canada, we could block Canada. We could also unblock them on the left-hand side. So that's it for this video. I'm sure there's a couple things I missed, and if you'd like to see more, please put it in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right.